I'm being joined by Bharti Chaturvedi, who's the air pollution expert, who's also the founder and director of Chintan Environmental Research and Action Group. I'm also being jo joined by Dr. Rahul Chandola, who's the founder and of the Institute of Heart and Lung Diseases. Let me, in fact, start with uh, Bharti Chaturvedi. Uh, Ma'am, at this point, uh, we had seen the first stage of BRAP also be implemented, but the pollution situation only seems to be worsening. Of course, several other factors uh, do play into it. Uh, it is, you know, in terms of the weather also getting colder uh, and or stubble burning getting more severe and more rampant uh, across uh, states surrounding Delhi. Uh, but what else do you think needs to be done if perhaps the first segment of BRAP is not working? Do you think the second, uh, uh, the second half of this will work? I basically think that depending so much on BRAP itself is a very flawed idea. I think we, uh, we waste the whole year until October and then we talk BRAP. But instead, we really have to focus on two big things, or three really. We have to inform citizens so that they can actually enable local construction to be less polluting. I live in a place and I get a lot of complaints from across Delhi where people are constructing and it's extremely polluting. And there's no way that the DPCC or the Delhi Pollution Control Board has the resources uh, you know, to even come and address these things. The second thing I think we have to really do is we're already putting a lot of uh, public transport out, but we have to completely double and triple that. We can't wait for 2026 to have 3,000 or 6,000 electrical buses. We really, this city needs approximately 12 to 13,000 electric buses if we want to get uh, private cars off the road. Mm. And uh, they cause a lot of our emissions. They're very responsible. So before Grab, we have a lot of work. And the third thing is, that we're just not incentivized, decentralized composting and all of this is going on landfills. So I believe that just thinking that GRAP will solve our problems uh, is a false way to look at it and we need three systemic solutions. Um, and although we're doing something positive on public transport, right. uh, we still have to uh, really look at the big picture. So I wouldn't just lean on GRAP at all. Right, stay with us, ma'am. Let me open Dr. Rahul Chandola. So, now, of course, the important factor is that several people, uh, healthy people, in fact, uh, are also facing issues with their uh, throats and with their eyes burning because of the pollution. Uh, but you think at this point, the immediate solution also needs to be brought about for people already having a predisposition for respiratory issues who are in hospitals? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's very important to see that, you know, the susceptible population, you know, especially the elderly people, and people who have got the pre uh, comorbidities, you know, people who have got uh, mm. uh, COPD, asthma, people who have got, uh, you know, any kind of immunosuppressive illness, you know, who are undergoing chemotherapy, uh, people who have got chronic uh, health issues. You know, these are the people who are uh, more predisposed to the effects of uh, air pollution. And uh, especially the children and adolescents, you know, they are also very vulnerable to the toxic effects of the air pollutants. So these particular populations should should have a, a, a proper planning, you know, we should have a proper planning for these uh, set of people, population, and they should uh, take all the precautions uh, necessary uh, to, to prevent uh, the ill effects of the air pollution. Yes. Right, sir. And if you could just elaborate a little bit on what uh, people can do and what hospitals can do as well to improve the situation. See, number one thing is the elderly and geriatric population and the, the ones who are predisposed, as I said, the ones who have got mm -hmm. comorbidities. Not only the lung-associated comorbidities, but even the cardiovascular, the people who are uh, diabetics, you know, who are long-term hypertensives, people who have got, uh, uh, you know, associated coronary artery disease, any heart attack in the past, or the lung illnesses, as I said. You know, these patients and geriatric patients, you know, any patient who is mm -hmm. any person who is uh, more than 60 years in age, uh, you know, these people uh, uh, should, uh, 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 you know, un uh, understand that, you know, uh, they have to uh, take precautions in terms of, you know, they should wear masks uh, mm. all the time when they're out in the, in the, in the, uh, in the public. Uh, and also at the same time, uh, they should uh, uh, do the deep breathing exercises at home, especially in this uh, coming season. Uh, this will strengthen their lungs. Uh, the regular exercises like the unloom, mm -hmm. loam, you know, the deep breathing exercises, spirometry at home, they can keep that small, simple spirometer at home. Mm -hmm. That is very handy, you know, comes at 1,000 rupees cost and nothing. And that can, they can keep blowing that, you know, that can uh, improve their lung health. 
the same time steam inhalation once in a day in the morning you know that keeps the airways moist uh, uh, the geriatric population and at risk population should ensure they should get pneumovac and the flu shots okay. you know every uh, season this will ensure that they don't get uh, any additional uh, infection you know uh, the air pollution can just compound the ill effects of any infection lung infection so all these precautions need right. to be taken uh, by by the susceptible population right. uh yeah Quick word from Bharti Chaturvedi. Now, just to understand, are we heading in the right direction to address the issue of pollution, or is the situation going to get worse? Uh, uh, of course, we perhaps have seen that you know the situation from last year. Uh, now, the pollution seems to have reduced. So, does that mean we're heading in the right direction with these measures and uh, the awareness that's being created? So, we've had awareness, and that's uh, thanks to citizens' groups, uh, you know, doctors in the city, and. Uh, you know generally uh, civil society and i think we're not headed in the right direction because our first air in uh, in delhi the first day we had clean air this year was only in peak summer in june last year it was september hmm. so there's a serious problem we should really have much better air than what we get throughout the year so i really urge you not to only think of uh, you know bad air in october november december hmm. but in fact look at all 12 months and see what makes us have air that doesn't meet our own standards all the way till you know for the first 6 months mm -hmm. and then we only have 3 to 4 months of good air and then in the last quarter we're collapsing again so in fact we only have 3 months of possibly okay air um and i really feel for and i really worry about outdoor workers municipal uh safai karmcharis traffic policemen uh even waste pickers even street vendors i mean their job requires them to be outdoors breathing 9 months right. of air but not meet the standards right. so i'm talked that in all these other months we haven't tried to safeguard at least their health okay. it's absolutely vital that you do what you can i know that the government can't do everything but the delhi government should have at least protected these people's health and right. that's not just some mask you also have to give them eye glasses air pollution hits the eyes very very fast right and uh, start doing it this month that's the very least i mean street vendors uh, waste pickers traffic policemen all of these people safai karmcharis hmm. these are people who run our city you know we really can't force them to accumulate right. our toxins right. in their bodies Absolutely thank you Bharti Chaturvedi and uh, Dr Rahul Chandola for joining us and sharing your thoughts on this story we'll of course continue tracking the story as it develops